I raced in uh, Brock Yates's. For those people who don't know who Brock Yates is, he was a legendary automotive journalist for Car and Driver, and the creator of the original Cannonball Baker Sea to Shining Sea Memorial Dash uh, race, which ran four times. And uh, so I raced in his one lap of America because uh, somebody connected me to get in, and um, me and him hit it off. And I was actually brought in to bring the movie back. Uh, after I raced uh, once there, and then Brock found out a, a little bit behind, behind the scenes about me, he, he called me up and he says, "Hey, Jaybird, want you to come up to the to the estate and let's talk about getting this movie back together because you're like a, you're a young guy at the time. I was a young guy." Uh, you young guy, you got the connections because nothing's happening on this thing. And I got it the closest. I'll be honest with you, man. We had everybody on board. Uh, Hal Needham, uh, Al Ruddy, uh, Brock. Uh, these are all the producers, right? And and Raymond Chow from Golden Harvest. And at the time, Raymond Chow was probably 200 years old. Lord knows the man's still alive today. But nobody had gotten these guys back together, you know, in the 70s, nobody knows – these contracts were written so loosely, right? Nobody knows who really controls it. Ruddy, think, who produced The Godfather, thinks he controls it. Hal thought he could – I got all these guys together for a private party at my house in Winter Park, Florida, and uh, didn't tell any of them that I brought the other ones. And and it was – I got to tell you, we had Terry Belay there, you know, Hulk Hogan and a few others. And uh, it was just – it was so fun. And we screened the movie in my home theater. I had a theater that, I mean, a home theater that looked like a movie theater. And, uh, we screened the movie. Pammy, his wife, Brock's wife is like, Oh my God, Jay, she, he has not seen this since like 1982. And we screened it. Hal's doing talking about it. Brock's talking about Brock's like that guy, Dean Martin there. He, he, he really drinking that shit. That's real alcohol right there. And it cracking. I mean, we're just cracking up. They're telling me about Sir Roger. Pammy's like, uh, that's Brock's wife. Pammy's like, oh my God, dirtiest mouth on the planet. That guy had a had a dirty joke every two seconds. But it was super cool because I had stunt drivers there and all these all these friends from the industry. Everybody is so jam packed. You gotta see the photo. Jam packed in here, listening to what would be a DVD, you know, the DVD narration in real time happening while these guys are talking about all this shit that really went down. And we got it there. I got to tell you, for whatever animosity was between those guys for all those years, it, it totally melted away. They were all like kids again, all in love with each other, all like, let's do this, da, 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 da. And the only one who didn't come was Raymond Chow, right? And Golden Harvest, big company, and Raymond Chow's a you know bazillionaire. Uh, and at the time, I think, like you say, he's like, two must have been 200 years old at that time. We had everybody on board, including Raymond, and then... Right when it came down to the final signing, I get a phone call from Raymond's people, and they said, you know, uh, Jay, uh, Raymond respects you very much, and he he thinks you'd be great, and da 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 you know, the whole pounding it on because you're going to get dropped off a cliff. But he's, he says it's going to be a pass. And that, that was the end of that, right? So since that, so I'm going to tell you right now, for anybody who even knows what Cannonball Run is, that movie – will never get remade, will not, okay? Brock's now passed away, Hal's passed away, Al Ruddy's on his last leg. Again, Raymond Chow still powers through at 300 years old. But what happens is these contracts are so loosely written in the 70s, anytime anybody breathes doing a cannonball film, the lawsuits happen and it goes nowhere. And so the last one was, I think, 2013 Al Ruddy, uh, said we're going to do a cannonball and da, 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 and it got so watered down. We're going to do it in Europe because nobody in the United States would have anything to do with the movie and they need to underwrite it with brands. And, and it, but I was like, and I got all, everybody called me. Oh God, is there, do you see the press announcement? Da, da, I said, I'm going to tell you what, I'll believe it when I see it. Never happened. Well, you know that it won't, but a thing that you got to feel good about is these guys that had issues with each other when they're from a distance, they're able to carry it around and let the other guy make the first move or create their own story about what's wrong with the other guy. But when you didn't tell the others that who else was going to be there when you were inviting them, then now we're here. Well, you know, it's like high school. It's like high school, right? You only remember the good parts. When they got back together and they're watching that movie, it hit them how cool it was and, uh, and they wanted to do it again. And we were, man, we were so close. And then 
when Raymond did that, there's no way to do it. I mean, there's, you got to have everybody on board or, or somebody's going to sue and nobody wants to take that on. And so I told Brock uh, when that happened, I said, you know, Brock, what if we, what if we look at it a little bit different? What if we, what if we did something that where the movie was inspired from the real event? Uh, why don't we create a product inspired from the movie? And we, cre I said, and we'll call it, you know, whatever. And uh, Brock was like, Jaybird, anything you want to do, I'm right behind you because this is never going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And it was Tom, okay? So we created this concept of this quasi-reality show, even though everything's authentic, okay? Not like Amazing Race where it's all staged. Literally an Amazing Race. They tell him, okay, get out of the car and run to the cliff. And then, uh, no, do it again, only uh, this time uh, throw a purse at your wife and call her a whore. Right? That, that, they're called produced. All reality is that way. Ours was more like docutainment, right? Because we didn't, we didn't, I mean, the shit that went down on our show really actually went down. It's hilarious. So we struggled though for like six months trying to come up with a name, right? And Brock was co producer and, and, uh, we couldn't come up with anything. I finally told, uh, a few friends in Florida. I'm, do you know who Monty Pat, do you remember Monty Patterson? Very well. Yeah. Yeah, Monty was like my mentor, man. I love that man. I'm so sorry that he had passed away. I love that man. Like like, like another father that guy was to me. And Monty and Tom LaPointe and David Hickman, who was the president of my ad agency, and I said, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go downtown Orlando. I forgot where what this eatery was, but it was a hot wings place. We're going to order hot wings and get fucking wasted. But we are not leaving here until we come up with a name. And... Let me tell you, Tom, Tom came in with a book of NASCAR legends, right? So we're all talking and we're at this point, we're probably three sheets to the wind because we're still trying to come up with a name. And, and, and Tom opens that book up and goes, Hey, did you know there was a NASCAR legend named Fireball Roberts? And I'm like, get the what? His name was Fireball? I mean, sounds like Cannonball. And of course, Cannonball. Got ball in it. Yeah, and hey, right. And and Brock named Cannonball after Cannonball Baker. I'm like, okay, we named Mars after Fireball Roberts and and we're in. And then I said, nobody talks until we get the registered trademarks cleared, because I don't need, you know, 20th Century Fox on my ass. And uh, they've never peeped. They never peeped on the show, uh, even though we're clearly a spin-off of some sorts, right? Uh but now we're actually trying to produce a movie based on Fireball Run series, but you know, basically, it's the Cannonball Run movie nobody can produce with all these wacky characters and antics. But it'll be a scripted; it's scripted, right? So, it, but it kind of plays on the same thing. So we're able to bring it back that nobody can bring back. But that's one movie everybody wants to see: Cannonball Run. It's just never, it's never going to happen, man. It's never going to happen. This has been Jeff Stearns, connected through cars. 